Hi everyone, and uh, it's nice that you are here listening to me talking about um, um, nurturing a cross-disciplinary professional culture. Well, that's a bit heavy. I can barely pronounce that. Just putting it simple, um, I'm here to talk about one wide-angle perspective on forming professional teams. At the same time, uh, this is sort of a um, guideline to getting better on what you do. Uh, it has absolutely no scientific background. I've just collected some information, uh, restructured it, uh, hopefully in a meaningful way. Uh, I have twice points with some external views, and I'm hoping that this all makes some sense to you. This is actually what I do as a designer as well. First off, I'm looking into professional performance for, uh, from three angles. And the first one is professional skills. And by this I mean the heavyweight arguments you are going to drop on the table when you are describing yourself, for example, when you are applying a job. On the other way around, as an employee, you are demanding these skills from the people who are working with you. This is definitely not a comprehensive list, uh, and please don't feel hurt if your area of expertise is not mentioned in here. Uh, there are people who truly are focused on one single area of expertise, and there are jobs uh, like that too, and that's totally okay. But I bet that quite many of you can actually successfully work in more than one area. Mm -hmm. One area might be your main expertise. Perhaps you have formal education uh, background which supports that. And the other ones you might have learned while working. Your special interests might broaden your expertise and so on. And what's really nice is that, that there are people um, whose expertise overlaps yours. And aren't these the people who are really fun to work with? Because they truly seem to get what you are meaning, although you don't exactly work with the same, exactly the same things. They just apply uh, what you mean to their area with a great success. They are, they are really great, great people. <coughs> okay, the second angle is your supportive, more general skills. And I think that the meaning of these is quite underestimated. These skills are also something uh, you probably mentioned in your job application um, when you describe yourself as a person. But these are not your personality, and these are not uh, properties of personality. These are definitely skills, and they can be learned. And the third angle is your personality, uh, which can, of course, be described with many uh, personality theories or models. I just picked one for fun here. It's simplified Myers-Briggs model. And uh, I picked this because from cognitive functions, it emphasizes how we perceive the world and how we make decisions. <coughs> so um, that's probably why it's quite useful in working life. Uh, just putting it simple, each person acts typically somewhere here in these four axes. Uh, you can show extreme tendency to one or another end here, or you can show more balanced behavior, which would be somewhere in the middle. Um, this is actually not how strongly you manifest the beha behavior, uh, except for example, how heavily introverted person you seem to be. Um, that thing has to do with other personality building blocks. For example, some people talk something about cognitive energy. Your temper might do something to that. And there are some previously mentioned supportive skills that actually help you to regulate your behavior. But what I can claim uh, is that often um, these extreme inclinations, they tend to, they tend to make your life bit difficult. So, for the second thing, let's put this information together 
Um, it's basically put together every time a working team is formed. And this is the basic, like, traditional old school way. Which is simple, because we just need to decide what areas of, of expertise is needed, and just pick the guys for the slots. And then the project manager will take care if people are lacking in their supportive space, right? And uh, should we talk something about uh, chemistry between people? What chemistry? I mean, this is work. We should get over that, right? When you look at this uh, image here, <coughs> it's actually quite ob obvious how communication heavy this kind of network can be, because do these people even speak the same language? Should we use the project manager here, as again, as an agent running between these areas? Of course, we already recognize that there are those people who have skills more than one area, and uh, lucky us if they got picked in here, because at least they will help us to solve some of these communication problems or challenges. Plus, they are the people who are nice to work with. Uh, here's the alternative view. This is something that I, that I actually borrowed uh, from mm -hmm. Sami Poimala. I have to let you know that he's um, uh, maybe a Microsoft guy, so we were... Well, <laughs> seriously, his method for team building is quite nice. He suggests quite strongly that we let teams build themselves. And of course, this is quite... Um, at least many of you who work as a freelancer, you have at least some sort of challenge, uh, a chance to do this. What this does, it takes care of the chemistry issues, for sure. And perhaps when people trust, um, uh, perhaps uh, these people who get to do this, they also can trust that the support, supportive skill set is good enough when they get to uh, work with people with, who they actually know. For every project, we still need to do the basic thing, identify the required expertise areas. But then comes the difference. Uh, he wants us to focus on people with more than one professional skill. Uh, <laughs> find the least amount of people that covers all the required areas. This sounds nice to me because it must mean savings. I, I don't mean just money, for example, communication. It's much more economical in that way. Uh, it means fluid communication because people understand each other. And uh, we get lots of people who are actually fun to work with in this one project. And even the one occasional single expertise expert is not alone here either because his expertise will overlap at least one another person. That's just beautiful. Now I have just one short set uh, from personal perspective. Uh, work with the people who you want to work with. This is really nice and easy. You can say it's comfortable. Work with the people who you want to know better. And uh, I have to say that this is a bit of a curve for, for us introverts, as at least. Um, work with the people who can teach you, and this is definitely much more economical than getting a new degree, for example. Know your skill set and develop it consciously. Work in the project, projects that challenge at least one of your secondary professional skills. Work in the projects that challenge at least one of your supportive skills and um, find books to help you out if you find getting better by yourself challenging. There are lots of them, they are called mostly self-help, I guess. <laughs> Subsidize your weak support skills with teamwork and technology. But I'm not saying that you have to be asked. I mean, be responsible of your own doings and, and ask for help and give credit to people. Give credit to where it belongs. Uh, especially develop your self-awareness and self-knowledge, because these are sort of um, essential supportive skills. And the last thing, 
you have to understand which supportive skills help you to smooth the spikes of your personality. It will definitely help you to solve the conflicts in a constructive way. And overall, it makes you more confident. Yeah, now it's time for a fist bump. And thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.